Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our next lecture about Gelita RxL. Gelita RxL is a specially designed um, gelatin with um, reduced crosslink performance for capsule applications. Today, I will only focus on the soft capsule side. I would like to firstly introduce myself and the company Gelito I'm working in. My name is Maren Köhler and I've been working at Gelito for about 12 years now. My background is food chemistry and I'm a technical product manager within our RBD research and business development department. Gelita itself is with a market share of about 26%, the market leader in the collagen protein industry. Um, collagen proteins comprises gelatin, pharmaceutical edible, technical grade gelatin, but also um, collagen peptides, possibly you know Fortigel and Verisol, our bioactive collagen peptides and um, a third part are also um, partly soluble collagen, like our Pargale product. Okay, I will first give a short introduction for people who are not so familiar with gelatin. What is gelatin, what is collagen, and then we will focus on Gelita RxL. Um, we have different types of Gelita RxL based on different raw materials, on bones, um, bovine hides and pigskin. Today I will focus on bovine hide and bone gelatin. Okay, people who are dealing with it know what is pharmaceutical gelatin. It's covered by the monographs. According to the European Pharmacopoeia, it's defined as a purified protein obtained by partial acid hydrolysis, our type A gelatin. This is mainly the pigskin gelatin. Um, by partly alkaline hydrolysis, type B gelatin. This is bone or bovine hide gelatin. And also, or it could be um, treated by enzymatic hydrolysis, um, resulting in non-gelling gelatin. Um, it's done, or it's hydrolyzed collagen from animals, including fish and poultry. This is also regulated by the monograph of the European Pharmacopoeia. Um, difference to the USP is that um, the non-gelling gelatin is not covered by the USP, um, only the type A and the type B gelatin. Raw material for our gelatin, or for gelatin in general, is native collagen, mainly from bovine and porcine origin, could be skins, bones, um, and sometimes also from fish and poultry. Of course, all raw materials that we are using are from healthy slaughtered animals approved for human consumption. What is collagen? Because it's so important for us, it's a fibrous protein, it's the most occurring protein in mammals, it's not only one um, protein, it's a family of proteins, about 27 different types are known. Important are type 1, 2 and 3. Within um, one species, type 1 collagen is identical from skin's bones and tendons and comparing different species, it's very homologous. Important is the triple helical structure of collagen. You have three protein chains that are intertwined to form a rigid strand. Um, the helical part contains 1014 amino acids and the molecular weight of this triple helix is about 290 kilo Dalton. Looking what is happening from collagen to gelatin, we first have a pretreatment and then an extraction just by water so that this triple helical structure is um, destroyed and then after gelling you have a reformation partly of the triple helix. Just an overview about production. As I said before, you have an acid or an alkaline pretreatment. Then you have an extraction just by water. In the batch process, it's with different temperatures of water. Then these extracts are purified by different steps. 
concentrated up, dried, investigated, of course, in QC lab. And after that, it's milled, sieved, blended according to the customer requirements and according to the application it's used for. Okay, coming now to the capsules. Um, gelatin capsules are the industry standard because they offer a high bioavailability, protect active ingredients against oxygen and light, and present a neutral taste and order. And of course, they promote a very good patient compliance. But gelatin could get insoluble or partly insoluble, especially under extreme storage conditions, the ICH 4075, for example, or under extended shelf life requirements. An additional point could be unusual shell components or if there are some residue of certain metals that could, could cause cross-linking. Another point could be a pellicle formation, a shell fill interaction, especially with problematic fills like herbal extract where the fill isn't released after storage. Yeah, what is the idea, what's the idea of Jolita to reduce the cross-linking? The idea was to increase the level of the collagen peptides that are present in the gelatin. And the result was then our Gelita RXL. It could add value to the capsules and enhance the capsule dissolution properties. As I said before, shelf life is improved, especially at high temperatures and humidity. And additionally, you could explore new fills that could be encapsulated before for certain markets. It's protected by patents in the US, China, Indonesia, Mexico, they are already granted, and in other countries they are pending. Additionally, I think what is very important to know is that it's pure gelatin, pharmaceutical and edible grade gelatin. There are no additives, no modifications, so that it could be used um, also for H&N products in the US. Um, there is no limitation. Okay, to have a look at the um, the background of the cross-linking in gelatin, especially um, the free amino groups of the lysine and hydroxylysine are very reactive. Um, also, the free carboxy groups of, of glutamic acid and aspartic acid um, could react um, and could cause this cross-linking. Um, looking at the self-cross-linking within the shell, it could be that um, the free amino group of the lysine and the free carboxy group react so that you get a bigger molecule at least twice as big as before and this um, could cause dissolution problems. If you have um, reaction with aldehydes coming from the fill, um, there could be also a reaction and cross-linking problems. Another point, as I said before, could be that um, metals like chromium, alumina, copper could react and also the molecular weight would be very high and the gelatin does not dissolve anymore. To overcome this issue, we have these very small collagen peptides adjusted in the gelatin um, so that they can react with the gelatin, block it, and the molecular weight increases only by about 5% and is still soluble. This is true for self-cross-linking, but they also, of course, could react with aldehydes. Okay, looking back, it means that gelatin shell dissolution is compromised, implying cross-linking. A pellicle could form, entrapping the fill. And our solution is Gelita RXL. Looking forward, Gelita RXL bone is performing better than standard lime bone gelatin. This is what I'm going to show. Gelita RXL Buvan high gelatin is better than standard high gelatin. And a third point that we haven't expected, but it is like this, that Gelita RXL height even performs better than standard lime bone under our test conditions, of course. We um, started with films, but then, of course, um, also make capsule tries at the University of Heidelberg in the pharmaceutical technology. 
a modified Chang Sung type 3 machine was used with these um, conditions. As a shell formulation, we used our, let's say, standard shell formulation, 44% gelatin, and then glycerol and polysorb, both 11%, and the remaining was water. And as a fill formulation, we just used PEC 400, European Pharmacopoeia quality, um, a very pure quality where the formaldehyde is specified as not more than 5 ppm. A very good quality. I think it was, we tested it about 2 ppm in the beginning. And of course, you know that formaldehyde causes this cross-linking. We put some glycerin in to re uh, reduce the migration from the shell. And we used as a model for the release a brilliant blue because we didn't add any actives. We stored the capsule under 4075 and 3065 ICH storage conditioned, open and closed in bottles. We don't have the possibility to blister, so that we said, okay, we have the very drastic opened and we have the closed, and of course blister is something in between. Then we stored also at 2250, and up to now we have results up to one year. We know, of course, that according to the requirements of the pharmacopoeia, the 4075 storage is only necessary for six months, but we wanted to see in our model how good is the gelatin, and it's only a model. Of course, if you add other substances, it could be different. As a dissolution kinetics, we use the USP pedal 2 equipment, medium water, 37 degree, 50 RPM, and we detected um, the dissolution of the gelatin and the release of the brilliant blue. The gelatin parameters, we have chosen for the first part, for the lime bone and the RXL part, very similar gelatin, usual soft capsule qualities, 160 bloom, 3.2 um, millipascal seconds for the viscosity, and finally it resulted in a gel mass viscosity of about 9 to 11,000 millipascal seconds. <clears throat> As I said before, we measured shell dissolution, um, this red curve and the fill release, the blue one. We could make it simultaneously with an automatic dissolution equipment. Okay, starting with the lime bone, first have a look at the shell dissolution, the gelatin cell dissolution. Um, I've chosen here only the most drastic conditions, the 4075 storage first open. If you can see here, starting with the red line, the red line is for the fresh capsules, then we have the three month blue, six months green, and the black is the 12 month curve, um, that you can see after 12 months, only um, a slight delay, but a delay of the shell dissolution, but it's only um, a slight delay and after one year. Looking at the Gelita RXL bone, there is no delay in shell dissolution. Looking at the fill release, um, marked by our brilliant blue, you also only can see a marginal delay after 12 months and no delay at the RXL side. Then going to the closed storage conditions, we see after 12 months, a delay for lime bone gelatin, looking at the shell dissolution, and for the RXL again, there is no delay. Looking at the fill release, it's much more drastic. The standard lime bone, you really have trouble after 12 months with the fill release. For the RXL, there is no delay. <clears throat> this is now both curves for shell and fill, and you can see that only a very short part of the shell of the gelatin is undissolved, but the release is very, very bad. That means that, that a pellicle has formed. And at the RXL side, it's unchanged, no pellicle formation. Um, then we go 4075 open 12 months. You have a slight delay in the release, and this is open 
is better than closed because open you sometimes see hydrolysis of the gelatin and that's what you couldn't see under closed storage conditions. And for the RXL, it's even faster than for fresh capsules after 12 months, also again because of the hydrolysis that you have at under 4075 open storage conditions. Okay, why is that and what is happening with the gelatin? Looking at the molecular weight distribution of gelatin, you can see this is for fresh capsules, lime bone, the 100,000, the alpha chain of the gelatin, 200, 300, and this is the microgel, this is the high molecular part, um, it has a molecular weight of more than 400,000 Dalton. And then you can see after three months, six months, and 12 months, that the 100,000, the part is decreasing, and the high molecular part is increasing. And this is cross-linking and, yeah, the impede of the fill. Looking at the RXL side, Jolita RXL, again, you have your 100,000, the microgel here, you have the small peptides, three months, six months, 12 months. Again, you can see that this is decreasing, but the high molecular part is more or less unchanged. So that, yeah, you can see there is not happening cross-linking very much. Okay, as a summary, for lime bone gelatin capsules, only a mild cross-linking is occurring after 12 months at 4075. For closed storage, there is a clear evidence of a pellicle formation and an open storage um, a delay in fill release. And for the RXL, you still have an excellent performance after 12 months at 4075. Molecular weight analysis has shown that it's growing the high molecular part um, due to the cross-linking. Okay, this was the first topic that the RX bone, uh, bone performs better than the standard bone gelatin. Okay, the second part was that we compared different lime tight gelatin qualities. Different to the viscosity, these four types are more or less standard types in a viscosity range of about three to four millicaspal second, one is 3.9, the other is 3.2. And additionally, we have chosen one with a less or a lower viscosity, but also could be good used, good used for soft capsule production. Gel mass viscosity was in the range of, let's say, 8,000 to 15,000, 10,000 for the lower viscosity. This is Therefore, higher because I forgot to say that for this low viscous type, we have adjusted a little bit the gel mass, visco uh, gel mass composition. We used a little bit a higher gelatin and plasticizer concentration to get a gel mass viscosity you can work with in soft capsule production. Again, or here, we only have the fill release, 4075 storage open for the low viscosity type, the 2.5 millipascal seconds. You can see that there is a little bit um, the dye release slowing down. The red curve are for the fresh capsules, the black one after 12 months. And at the RXL side, there is no delay in dye release. Looking at the 3.3 viscosity a little bit higher, you clearly can see that already after three months, you have a drastically slowing down of the dye release. Compared to the RXL, there are not these changes, no cross-linking. And then most drastical is the high viscous, but it is a visc viscosity that is used for soft capsule production. Um, already after three months, there is more or less no dye release anymore. The RXL type is quite good, no problem. Let's summarize it. Um, lime tight gelatin capsules have a viscosity-related cross-linking problem. The higher the viscosity, 
the faster the onset of the dissolution problem or issue. Jolita RXL in comparison, you can see very good fill release already also after 12 months and also for the high viscosity levels. So that customers can choose what viscosity level they would like to work with or what is in their files, what they have to use to. Um, and with the RXL types, it's quite good. So second summary is the liter RXL height performs better than the standard height gelatin. Last but not least, we have compared lime bone gelatin with lime height gelatin. We have a standard lime height gelatin. We have chosen the viscosity of 3.2. In comparison, a lime bone with the same viscosity and an RXL lime height gelatin. Looking at the fill release, 4075, closed storage, six months. You have, as you can see, a delay in the fill release for the standard lime tight gelatin. In comparison, the lime bone is much better, but compared to the RXL height, the green curve, this is still better than the bone gelatin. This was really surprising for us. This was not what we were expecting, but in this model, um, this was really the result. Okay, let's summarize. The liter RXL height outperforms lime bone gelatin in our system. There is cross-linking problem with lime height gelatin. This is known, especially, let's say, in the South America where height gelatin is used, mainly used, um, they can observe these cross-linking problems. Lime bone gelatin that is often used or seen as the gelatin as the industry standard for capsules has less problems of cross-linking, but you can also observe after certain times and storage conditions also some cross-linking. And in comparison, our latest generation of Gelita RXL high gelatin performs even better than the standard lime bone gelatin. Okay, in conclusion, we can say that Gelita RXL is the solution for cross-linking challenges. <laughs> Thank you for your attention.